Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 41 of the Cloud Computing Australia show with Brad Nelson and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, David and I are talking about that the analyst firm Gartner has forecast that by 2022, more than a quarter, which is 28%, of spending within key enterprise IT markets will be cloud-based, which is up from 19% this year. Make sure you stay until the end to get David's top three tips on cloud computing. Hi, Dave. It's great to have you on the Australia show again this week. Oh, it's great to be here, and this is a great topic. We seem to be very successful with cloud computing. Who would have thought it? Yes, indeed. Very successful indeed. So look, a great opening question would be, Dave, is look, will cloud computing be just computing at some point in the near future? I think so. And I think most of the, uh, the experts in cloud computing kind of uh, you know, go along with me on that. I think what happened was that cloud computing became distinguished unto itself as kind of a, uh, uh, a separate science in terms of how we do computing. And now it really is so commonplace you know, that it's very much like PC computing, very much like mainframe computing, very much like other aspects or patterns of computing, where it's just becoming computing unto itself. And I think that, uh, you know, ultimately we're, we're just going to see it fade away. And I, I to, to be honest with you, I've never been in love with the term cloud computing just because it's so hyped and means so many things to so many people. And, and ultimately I have to end up explaining it 20 times a day. And it means so many different things uh, to different industries, different ways of, uh, you know, how we do computing. It's SaaS, it's on demand, it's infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, DevOps. Now it's uh, IoT and AI, and all these things really kind of come in the cloud computing category. And I think of just we just think about it as common computing. That's probably a step in the right direction. Yeah, you're right. It, 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 there's, there's so many intricacies and so many levels to cloud computing. I mean, I myself and my team that, you know, it's breaking it down into those those uh, areas of business which are really specific to their needs where, you know, some people don't even realize that uh, cloud computing is just cloud computing because it, it's not anymore. As you said, it's uh, it's really a bit more specific than that. And, and I think people get very confused. So, you know, having those conversations can be very enlightening for some people. Uh, I had a chat with someone the other day talking about cloud computing and they went, Oh yeah, you mean you mean iCloud? Yeah, I use iCloud all the time, and I'm like, well, well, it's kind of, but not quite. <laughs> it's just uh, you know, okay, that's a storage facility and stuff. We get that, but you know, it's uh, yeah, it, it becomes a bit of a bit of a minefield, doesn't it, Dave? Yeah, it does. And you know, my my mother lives in a senior living facility, and uh, you know, close by to where I live, and you know, I go over there for brunch, and she'll uh, basically introduce me as a uh, uh, this is my son, the cloud computing guy. And suddenly I get a barrage of questions about what cloud computing is and what it does. And the reality is I came to realize I really didn't have any good answers, you know, to really kind of address the layman because it is such a uh, appealing of the onion in terms of the way in which this, you know, technology kind of, kind of comes around. So, you know, cloud computing becomes everything and anything. And if it becomes everything and anything, does it really mean anything? And I think going forward, you know, we're seeing a, a tremendous shift in, um, you know, spending dollars, which are, you know, the, the Gartner, the symposium they had in Australia reported. However, how does it kind of affect the way in which we're actually building solutions? The reality is we're using the same patterns, the same technology, just in different ways. And the fact we're consuming it over the public cloud, you know, really kind of is such a minute shift in the way in which we're dealing with technology that it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a, uh, uh, you know, has to be something that's distinguished as something very separate. So I think things are kind of meshing together, cloud computing on premise, various systems. It becomes kind of another form of computing into itself. It's a different consumption model in some instances. But we have to kind of get over the fact that it's, it's very new and diverse technology because, number one, it's not new, you know, well over 15 years old. And it's not necessarily diverse because we're dealing with time sharing systems for a number of years. We're just able to leverage it in a much more better and sophisticated and effective way. And I think that's, uh, that's fine. Um, and I think that it's okay if we just kind of stop talking about cloud and, and start talking about business solutions, how to make things work, things like that. That's fine. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's it's a case by case uh, need, isn't it, on what topics within cloud computing that you're uh, you're discussing. So you know, cloud cloud computing. I mean, we use that. In fact, if if cloud computing goes away, where do we stand? Because we're meant to be the cloud computing recruitment specialists. So that just makes us that makes us computing specialists. I think you're safe. It's going to be around for at least five more years. Um, eventually, I think it's going to kind of morph into you know infrastructure things like that. But we're going to be talking about cloud for some time. It hasn't really. Um, lost in momentum in the, in the time that I've been involved with it, have actually gained momentum. And I think people like it. I think that's why people talk about cloud computing. But the reality is, you know, as you know, as you're recruiting for people in the space, there's a hundred different varieties of cloud computing, different functions and features, and platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, Amazon, Google, all these sorts of things become kind of uh, diverse ways of looking at the same topic. You know, however, we just love to say the word cloud. It's in the cloud. You know, it's part of the cloud. You know, all these sorts of things are, uh, you know, kind of baked into our persona right now. Not not just the United States, but worldwide. Yeah, it has a certain nice broad brushstroke kind of ring to it, doesn't it? Cloud computing. I think that's nice. And when you sort of delve a bit deeper and get a bit more specialized, that they get to the, the nuts and bolts of the atmospheric clouds, it's, uh, it's very interesting. <laughs> well, it leads us on nicely, Dave, to your top three tips for cloud computing. So if you'd love to like to share those with us, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, number one is you spend more money, and uh, and this, I mean, Gartner's, I think, uh, their estimations are right, are spot on. We're just, you know, increasing like leaps and bounds and utilizing this technology. So number one, keep an eye on the cloud providers out there and who's doing what and where and, and when. So as we invest more and, and make these uh, cloud providers richer and richer and richer, which we're doing, the ability to kind of understand where they're going with their technology, what they're producing, things like that. And it's okay to work into a multi-cloud strategy, uh, you know, play one side against the other and basically, you know, buy your best and most effective storage, your best and most effective compute platforms, because this stuff is commoditizing at its primitive levels. And I think ultimately we're going to have, you know, four or five different providers out there. They're going to provide us with, you know, basically 90% of the platforms we're able to leverage. And they're going to be plus or minus 10% in their similarities. And I think that we're truly getting to a commoditization of the world. So keep an eye on the cloud providers. Make sure you're making the right deals. Make sure you're pushing the right contracts in, in the uh, hands of these guys so you're getting the best deals going forward. Don't forget to pay attention to legacy assets. You know, This is about mixing existing on-premise systems you've had around for years with your cloud-based platforms. You know That seems to be the new hybrid cloud and the new multi-cloud environment. So they're not going to go away. How are they going to work and play with way well with your cloud? Excuse me, work and play well with your cloud providers going forward. That's absolutely something that's an imperative. You need to understand how to make those things work, and then always work from a business case. You know, one of the things that I, I keep coming down to is we got to figure out if agility is the business case, if flexibility is the business case, if scalability is the business case, or it's just operational efficiencies. How much points? Our percentages do you weigh against those aspects of cloud computing and therefore how much value is going to have for your business going forward i'm having these discussions three or four times a day now with clients ultimately people want to know you know how do i measure the value it's going to bring back to the business if i'm a publicly traded company if i'm going to spend half a billion dollars on moving into the cloud-based systems they damn well want to know how much they're going to get back from that and those are the three tips this week Thanks, Dave. A great top three tips there. Interesting, though, you mentioned the, the, the final return on the investment of, of, of such a large investment into cloud from a, a Fortune 500. What's the sort of thing you say to that? Well, I think it really depends on the business. It's, it's completely if they're, you know, what's their value of agility? And so if it's a paper company in the Midwest, um, you know, which I've had before as clients, they'll tell me that, you know, agility really has no value to them. They're, they haven't changed the business process or their products in the last hundred years. And so therefore you provided me the ability to change my IT assets doesn't necessarily have the value. But if it's a bank, if it's a, a tech company, if it's a, uh, you know, anybody that really kind of puts a value on the ability to kind of change their processes at the speed of need, then that's really going to come back as, you know, money that's in the bank. It's strategically important to their organization that they're able to make this happen. And that's really real, where the real value is in cloud computing. The operational savings, normally you can shave you know, 20%, 30% off in terms of ops uh, versus as is to 2B. But you know, I think that doesn't necessarily move the needle anymore. People want to see the strategic value of this technology 
as it's applied in their domains, as it's applied to their technology. Yeah, very true. Very true. Dave, thanks for that. I'm sorry to jump in on that top three tips for you, but that was awesome. Thanks very much. Damn you. (laughs) And thanks for being part of the Australia show. (laughs) I was a pleasure, man. (laughs) I thought you weren't going to answer that then. Excellent, and thanks for watching everyone. We really hope you enjoyed watching this week's Australia show. Remember, you can connect with David on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. We're also on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all the, all the usual culprits. So check us out there, and until next week. <laughs>